Hello, everybody. Brit and Jake go to the movies are back once again, uh, doing a new episode. Yes, we are back. Uh, I'm Britton. And I am Jacob. And today, we're going to be talking about, uh, we're going to be talking about a movie. Yes, we are. Um, you know, it's funny, I, 27 is my favorite number. We are at our 27th episode, and I got the pick for this week, so, uh, we are doing Knives Out from Ryan Johnson that came out in 2019. Uh, I remember seeing trailers for this, and uh, I remember after The Last Jedi, Ryan Johnson was under some heat for, um, you know, The Last Jedi. I, I quite liked The Last Jedi myself, but there were a lot of people who didn't. Um, but then he decided, you know what, fuck you guys, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a baller murder mystery film called Knives Out. It's gonna be great. Get my kitty back there. Um, but, uh, Knives Out, Jacob, you excited for, for this? Oh, I'm very excited. Woo! Very, very good. What do you think of Knives Out? My favorite whodunit film since Clue. Such a <laughs> genuine film. Uh, the cast all around, they all, everyone brought their A-game here. Extremely well directed. Visually, it's, uh, very colorful. It, and like everything pops out it's just a fucking great movie and uh it's my favorite ryan johnson film oh yes i agree i mean looper is pretty good i haven't seen brick or the brothers bloom but uh, i think knives out has probably been his uh his, my personal favorite of his movies so far oh yeah I mean, definitely one of my favorites of 2019 Oh, yeah, most definitely. I took my dad to see this, and he actually grew to like it, too. We were kind of trying to guess what was going on as this was going, as this was moving along. Now, here's the thing. I am not a huge fan of these types of murder mystery, prim and proper. The, oh, dear, how, who murdered Mrs. whatever her name is today? You know, I don't like that. Um, now, there are exceptions. I do like Sherlock Holmes. Um, I also really love Clue from 1985. Uh, from the 80s with Tim Curry and all-star cast, by the way. Uh, and uh, I just got to reiterate real quick, Clue is amazing. Hell yeah. Oh my god, we got to talk about Clue someday. It's a great movie. Such a, such a good movie. Oh lord. I'm surprised that movie bombed back in the day. Like, you had, a, you had some gold right there. But anyways. <laughs> anyways, um, Knives Out... Though I like how this film, I like how this film toys with the detective genre, but with the murder mystery kind of cozy murder mystery genre, while it also kind of adheres to that sort of plot. Yeah, it sort of pokes fun at it. Yeah, it gives a more modern bent to it. Indeed. And man, we got ourselves a star-studded cast here. Oh boy. We do. I mean, Daniel Craig, Chris Evans, Anya D. Arma. Sorry if I mis. Uh, sorry if I mispronounced your name. Jamie Lee Curtis, Michael Shannon, Tony Collette, Don Johnson, Lakeist uh, Stanfield, Christopher Plummer, Catherine Langford. Man, we got a list cast here. We got the we got the whole gang here today. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, but this is a really, this is a really good film. Very delightful movie. I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, you know, I, there are things that I think are issues with this movie, but they're pretty minuscule for the most part. I thought this was a thoroughly entertaining and very playful movie. Indeed. I mean, when it comes to Ryan Johnston, I've only seen three of his films. Of course, Knives Out. The Last Jedi, which I personally really liked uh, as well, and Looper, which I thought was great. Uh, I have also not yet, uh, haven't seen Brick yet, plan on to, but Ryan Johnson so far I think is a really good director. I think he outdid himself with Knives Out. Oh yes, I think this film is, is just excellent. Excellent movie. Uh, great mystery plot and fun characters to watch, even though a lot of them are really bad. <laughs> Are uh, pretty oh. terrible. Um, <laughs> but they're fun to watch. Oh yeah, 
even so, even like characters uh, who you should hate, you just like watching them. Yeah, I mean, so this is also the first movie I saw Don Johnson in before I saw uh, Brawl and Cell Block uh, 99. Oh, yeah, uh, that was the first film I saw him in, and then Knives Out. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, my, my dad's like, that guy looks familiar, and he's like, oh, it's Don Johnson, he was in, like, some stuff in the 80s. And, you know, Don Johnson's been kind of making a comeback, I, I guess you could say. What the hell? He is. Sorry about that. Startled me. Uh, what were you saying, Jacob? Oh, yeah. I mean, like, I haven't seen... Uh, for me, I haven't seen him in a film since Django Unchained. And then I saw him in uh, Brawl and Cell Block 99, and then I saw him, like, where where have you been, Don? Oh, I, I forgot he was in Django Unchained. <laughs> he's, he's Big Daddy. I forgot about... I always forget that. Yeah, uh, thanks to Carlton, uh, who's... Yeah, uh, <laughs> in our Django Unchained episode, where he's like... Oh, Big Danny. Oh, God. So, thanks, Carlton. <laughs> By the way, go check out our Django Unchained episode. <laughs> oh, Lord. But Knives Out is just a great movie filled with... It's just fun to watch, you know? It's, it's a good one to sit back with your friends and just hang out and watch and, and just guess what's going to happen next. And it's it's engaging all the way through. Uh, some of my favorite actors are in this, like Michael Shannon, for instance. And, uh, oh man, just just a great movie. We also get to see Chris Evans flex those douchebag muscles uh, in this movie. And, oh, this is, just, this is just a delightful film. It's so delightful. It's just it's so fucking entertaining. And it's just consistently entertaining. Like, I, you never get, like, I've never been bored watching this film. Like, I've watched it like three times and I've never been bored by it. I liked it more. It's oh, such yes. a damn good movie. And, you know, I really like how this film makes all these people uh, who are kind of douchey, they make them they're likable and they're fun to watch. At least for me. I don't know. I don't know about you. No, I agree. But, uh, like, what are your blurb thoughts on this, Jacob? Uh, aside from what we've just talked about. Such a phenomenal film. Uh, as I said, my favorite whodunit film since Clue. Such an ingenuous film. Extremely well written. Extremely well directed. As I said, A-list casts who brought their A-game. Everyone brought their A-game. There's not a weak link to this entire cast. Everyone brought their A-game, as I said. It's just a phenomenal film. It's one of my favorite. It was one of my favorite movies of 2019. Such a delightful film that I'm glad that I glad that I'm so glad that I saw in theaters because the experience was really fun. Yeah, I know. It's, I I saw this around Thanksgiving with my dad. I was like, "Hey, Dad, we should check this film out." And my dad was like, "Yeah, okay." And we saw it, and we both really liked it. It was one of those movies we we were in sync with. That you both liked. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I remember the last one was probably Avengers Infinity War. He really enjoyed that one. I'm like, damn, that was really good, too. But uh, we'll save that for our Avengers uh, playthrough. Our uh, Avengers marathon, if we ever get around to that. Um, one of my friends last night, I was bowling with some friends of mine. They were asking me about my podcast. I'm like, do you guys just talk about superhero movies or you know comic book stuff? I'm like... We talk about just any kind of movie that we've both seen and we both either like, dislike, or maybe we disagree on. <laughs> it's just superhero films are easier to talk about, or just easy to talk about. At least for me. Yeah. So I will say, uh, we have yet uh, to uh, talk about one film where we both disagree on. No, we have. Yeah, that's that's true. We we haven't we haven't we haven't gotten to that movie yet uh, that we kind of disagree on. But, uh, uh, maybe someday. One day. I bet you're gonna be like, ha, Matrix! And you're gonna, like, throw it at me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you bastard. Oh, yeah. you, you, hate you. you should go talk to Carlton about that. <laughs> oh, God, it just turned into a shouting match. <laughs> um, I mean, knowing him, that would probably turn into a shouting match. Uh, but... Yes, we do talk about any kind of movies. I mean, we're talking about Knives Out today, so there you go. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our first Ryan Johnson film, I think. Oh, yes it is. 
I mean, we've talked about Ryan Johnson before. We've never actually talked about any of his movies. I like the movies from him that I've seen. But uh, Knives Out is something else entirely. I can't wait for the sequel movie, by the way. Oh, yeah. Knives Out 2. Give it to me now, Poppy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Give it now. Just just right now, Ryan Johnson. Just, just right now. Anyways. Uh, but, yes. So, this movie... Um, so I, I guess we should cut into this medium rare steak. Oh yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> um, so it begins as 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 you do uh, in a mansion where a guy called Harlan Bromby, who is a well, who is a very well known murder mystery novelist in the vein of someone like uh, uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, you know, Agatha Christie, that that kind of kind of murder mystery, kind of cozy sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I think we start the movie, there's the dogs running around, or I think maybe that's later, I don't know. Oh, that's later. Oh, well, um, we see a woman get some stuff and we see a mug that says my house, my rules, my, you know, uh, I, I forget. I think it's like my house, my rules. Yeah. Or my house, my mug, my rules. Yes, that's what it is. And, um, <laughs> and, uh, this woman is getting some, like, is making breakfast basically for, uh, Harlan Thromby and she en ends up, uh, going upstairs and then she sees he's been murdered. Dun, dun, dun. Well, okay, he actually committed suicide, but that that's for later. Hey, <laughs> let us have this moment. So, uh, they die. So, um, he ends up dying, and it just turns into a whole fiasco. Fran is, of course, freaked out. Uh, Fran is the woman who finds him, by the way. And, uh... <laughs> Uh, and it turns out that they were cel that uh, everyone was celebrating Harlan's 85th birthday at his mansion in Massachusetts. Ooh. And uh, things end up going well. So his family are, of course, put into... Um, of course, his family shows up. And uh, I'll be right back. Or, well, just gonna turn this on. Hopefully it doesn't drown out everything. Um. But, uh, yes. So Harlan Thromby is dead. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, he's, he's dead. Just, just dead in the first couple of minutes. Just like that. Yep. What he's, a great way to start this film. And he's played by Christopher Plummer of uh, Sound of Music fame, as well as uh, he's of Sound of Music fame, as well as uh, being in a bunch of other movies. Um, and he is oh, yeah. very enjoyable in this. Oh yeah, Christopher Plummer, may you rest in peace. You're great. Yeah, I was very sad when I heard he died. I do say the Sound of Music, even though ironically enough, he hated that film. <laughs> Um, uh, I think he's magnificent. I love how this movie, even when you, uh, even though he's not in the movie that much, you, you still feel his presence throughout the entirety of the movie. Yes, indeed. I mean, there is that, uh, I mean, it's kind of more obvious, it's, there are some more obvious moments where you feel it than not, like there's a, a little visual motif. I didn't catch it the first time I saw it, but there's this motif with the painting, there's a painting of him. And uh, when you first see it, he's kind of, like, frowning. He's like, ooh. And then when you see it later, it's him smiling. So, there you go. Great attention to detail. Oh, yeah, I gotta say, the attention to detail in this movie is awe-inspiring. I mean, I've, I, I, I can't even name all of them, but just all of the, the clever foreshadowings, just the visual details, just uh, everything about this damn movie. Yeah, there are so many details and so many foreshadowings. Like, Ryan Johnson, man, fucking genius. Oh, Lord, yeah, he, he gave it his all in this one. 
Absolutely. And uh, it uh, did a really damn good job. Oh, I agree. I think he did very good. So, anyways, his family end up, um, they're mourning his death, and uh, they end up having a funeral for him. And then, uh, uh, I think after they find Harlan dead, uh, I think that's when we meet Marta. Yes. We end up meeting Marta Cabrera, played by Ana de Armas. And I always think of a guy I know on Instagram who does, he runs a movie account, and he just crushes on Ana de Armas big time. Uh, well, I will say I, I do have a boner for her. <laughs> yes. Um, she plays Marta Cabrera in this movie, who's a uh, nurse. She is Harlan's nurse. Uh, and his friend, basically. She's, like, a friend of his. They hang out, and he just, he just hangs out, you know? They hang out together, she gives him medication, she looks after him in some ways. Uh, what, what do you think about Ana de Armas as Marta in this film? Because I have some opinions, but I wanted to know what you think first. Uh, so far, uh, I knew, like, uh, for when we first meet her, she's based, uh, she basically, like, uh, is, like, uh, Christopher Plummer's uh, support, uh, Har- Harlan's uh, supporter, in a way, like in pretty much her uh, her friend. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so far, Ana de Armas, uh, I I haven't known anything about her uh, as an actress, so I went in completely blind. Uh, for the most part, I thought she did really good in this film. Yeah, I I agree. I mean, I think her character. <laughs> this is yeah. kind of funny because this kind of the snag. Uh, it's kind of like. They do it. They play it cleverly, but it still kind of bugs me. She's a, she's like too good, you know. Yeah, I was, I would, yeah, uh, yeah. I was just about to say it's like, uh, she, uh, her character. I mean, like she's good in the movie. Uh, the uh, Ahmed Darmas, it's good in the movie, mm-hmm. but her character for me, like, okay, she's like too much of a goody two shoes. Yeah, like it's not like unrealistic, but it's like. Come on. Like, she's played realistically enough, and I like how they play it later. It's kind of the big snag is, you know, yada yada. But uh, we'll get to that later. But, um... <laughs> but, yeah, I, I was like, you know... And, I mean, there is a lot of political commentary in this film. There's a lot of... I, I would say it's more... Well, it's not even really subtextual. It's more just the plot of the movie. But, uh, you know, I, I tend to be kind of weary of the rich white people looking down on the poor, oh, so poor soul that is the, like, Mexican or black people. I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm, you know. I, I think it's kind of trite. <laughs> but, you know, in this movie, I can deal with it. Because it's so entertaining throughout the entirety of it. I, you know, I can deal with it for once. Yeah, like, I can tolerate through it because, like, the execution is so entertaining. Yeah, exactly. So, like, uh, you can get away with uh, the whole, like, oh, the white people looking down on the uh, Mexican or, like, brown person, you know? And uh, making her, like, a goody two-shoes, uh, I, I can deal with it. Yeah, it's just like, oh, <laughs> the humanity! Oh, the poor <laughs> Mexicans! You know, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, but, you know, I, I, I can deal with it. It's fine. And it makes it sound like I'm dissing on this movie. And, and no, I'm not. I'm just I'm just saying that that is a little part that bugs me. It's not as obnoxious as some other movies like Elysium, which... Ugh, I hate that film. Which, oh, God, uh, yeah. That's another discussion for another time. That, that, that's for another time. I fucking hate that movie, though. Anyways. Uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right. So, she ends up waking up, and, um, they're just hanging out, and, uh, let me tell you, the murder mystery references, Ryan Johnson lays it on thick. Like, he is wearing the, what inspired him on his sleeve. He's just slapping murder mystery shit everywhere in this movie. Every single where. Yeah, I know. It's like, anywhere, there you go, murder mystery stuff. He's just like, nope, I'm just going to slap it on there. Like her mom's watching like a Mexican dubbed, or not Mexican, a Spanish dubbed version. Uh, I sound so ignorant. <laughs> a uh, a uh, Spanish dubbed 
episode of Murder, She Wrote, which I'm not a huge fan of that show, but, you know, you can definitely tell the vibe. Her mother, or her sister's watching a murder mystery on her computer, which, uh, by the way, I didn't notice this at first, but there's a vocal cameo by Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Oh, yeah. Legend. Yeah, he plays the uh, he plays the detective. He says, "We got that nanny cam footage." You know, there you go. And um, indeed. Mm, mm, mm. Anyways, uh, so we end up meeting the Thromby family, and oh boy, are there a lot of uh, character. Uh, the, Oh boy, are they a bun are they are they a bunch of characters, let me tell you. Oh man. Tell me about it. Oh my lord. So uh the cops are kinda all over the place. The cops are hanging out and uh Marta is uh Marta goes over there and um uh, Jamie Lee Curtis shows up. Yep, Jamie Lee Curtis, Lori Strode herself, uh plays uh, Harlan's daughter. Her name is Linda Drysdale. Oh, yeah. Um, and, uh, she says, um, we end up, uh, we end up getting the, um, we end up, uh, just hanging out with them for a little bit, and they're kind of being interrogated by the police. Uh, two detectives, including one Overly excitable one. I forget what his name is. I forget who he's played by. Um, but we also see Lakeith Stansfield. Hello there. I didn't see you there. Uh, playing Detective Lieutenant Elliot. Hell yeah. Lakeith Stansfield from uh, Sorry to Bother You thing. Phenomenal movie, by the way. I Great still need to see. I, I still need to see that one. <laughs> oh. Ugh. Uh, but it's very, uh, yeah, he's, he's really good in this. Um, he's not really in it for very long, though. But he has some good lines. Oh, indeed. And, uh, we end up meeting the family. Yeah, we meet, uh, we meet, uh, meet a few people, like Richard Drysdale, played by Don Johnson, who, and, and this just makes me sad to say, he's kind of like a douchier version of my dad. <laughs> it's just sad, because I, I love my dad. You know, and yeah. my dad's awesome, but like, you know, when I when I was watching Don Johnson, I'm like this dude think, makes me think of my dad so much. If my dad were like more <laughs> of a dick, like that, that's that's Richard Drysdale, mm. <laughs> and he is just, oh my god, what what do you think of Don? Jo I think he, I think John Johnson's good, but this dude is insufferable. I I hate this guy. You know what? I hate this guy so effing much, but you know what? I love watching him. I know! Exa that's it. That's exactly it. He's so... it's That's kind of the thing with this family. They're not, like, good... I don't think they're evil, but they're not really good. They're, like, super douchey, but they're just fun to watch. Like, if I just watched, like, a, a soap of them just arguing, I'd watch it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Like, if, like, uh... Ryan Johnson decided to make a sitcom with just uh, this fight family, then I would watch it. Oh, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd pay the money. I'd pay it! They're so entertaining, even though uh, most of them are fucking douches. <laughs> yeah, uh, except for one of them, but we'll get to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's also the gag that they're always getting, uh, they're always getting Marta's, like, where her family's from wrong. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Linda says she's from Ecuador, and Richard says she's from, like, Uruguay, and, you know, just stuff like that. <laughs> it's like a running gag in the movie. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Richard just pulls the whole, he, he quotes Hamilton in his, uh, in his interview, and a uh, guy figured out his name, Trooper Wagner, played by Noah Segan, who is a frequent Ryan Johnson collaborator, if I recall correctly. Oh, yes. Um, I really like Trooper Wagner in this film. I love his just overly excitable just energy. I'm like, we, we, we all need a Trooper Wagner in our lives. We do. We do. <laughs> I really, yeah, I could really use a Trooper Wagner. We all could. Yes. 
Um, but back to Don Johnson. I hated his character in this movie, but goddamn, he's fun to watch. It, it, which is, you know, it, it, it's kind of fitting because you know it's kind of the same thing with uh, Ransom later on. But you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. I don't want to get too ahead of myself. Oh no, no. But Don John Don Johnson in this, like he's he's one of those characters who you just love to hate. Um, do we get the political debate scene here, or is that later? Uh, that's later. Okay, I thought so, but I was, you know, I wasn't sure. Uh, so we get a couple of, uh, so we get a couple of interviews. We meet Linda and Richard, who are, Linda is Harlan's daughter. She started a company, which she says is self-made, even though Harlan gave her some money to, you know, build up. Which, you know, I, that's kind of a thing, like, you know, that's not really, like, a bad thing, but whatever. I don't, I don't really, I don't really care. It's not really something that bugs me all that much. Uh, we also meet Walt Thromby, played by Michael Shannon, and he just turns on the buffoon. He just turns on the buffoon. Uh, the what? What do you call it? The uh, just his character is just so buffoonish. I think is the best word to describe Michael Shannon as is in this movie. He's very buffoonish. <coughs> God damn, he's entertaining. Oh man, he's he's fun. I love Michael Shannon. He's one of my favorite actors. And um, I uh, to quote Alan Seawright from Cinema Therapy fame, um, the man is a national treasure. <laughs> he really is. He really is. <laughs> and you know, Michael Shannon's known for playing like these more like really intense roles, but uh, man, yeah. he's hilarious in this movie. Yeah, it really showcases his uh, comedic chops, and man, he is. So entertaining in this. Like, he's walking around with a cane, and he's, like, later they're at the funeral, he's all like, you guys smoking grass? You, you know, know we are. <laughs> Which is, um, you know, and then he's like, then he starts, like, he just, like, fucking grills Chris Evans. But, um, anyway, again, I'm getting ahead of myself. But, uh, we end up meeting the family. Walt describes what happened the night that Harlan died. And uh, they were at the birthday party, and it seems like they're having a good time. And one of the visual details is that you see when Richard is describing uh, what happened, you see Richard's family standing aside, um, standing beside uh, Harlan as he's blowing out his candles, and the same thing with uh, Richard's family. So you can kind of tell that there's kind of a family rivalry thing going on. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. Um, we also meet Tony Collette's character, who was married to one of Harlan's other children, his another son, who is said to have died uh, since then. Her name's Joni. And, uh, oh boy, uh, you know, Tony Collette, I, my favorite role of hers is still hereditary, but she is great in this as well. Oh yeah, she is amazing in this. Uh, I agree, uh... Hereditary still my favorite performance from her. Uh, she was uh, really damn good at Nightmare Alley, and also a uh, very underrated Netflix film that she was also really damn good. And I'm thinking of ending things. Strongly recommend, by the way. But yeah, she's really good in this movie. Still need to see that. Damn it! I love Charlie Kaufman too. It's bullshit, man. Then again, I'm getting harassed to see Anecdote New York for years. So there you go. Uh, but Toni Collette is really funny in this film. She usually plays, like, really, well, not really intense roles, but she's been in a lot of horror movies, and, you know, like I said, she was in Hereditary, and, I mean, nothing's gonna be Hereditary for me, because that movie, who oh boy, but, you know, uh, she's hilarious in this. She's kind of like a Gwen, she's kind of like a hippie, sort of, w would you say that's, uh, would you say that's fair, Jacob? Yeah, she, uh, I would say she sort of uh, has that hippie personality. Yeah, she's selling like some goop type of shit that like some type of Gwyneth Paltrow type of shit. I got Gwyneth Paltrow vibes from uh, <laughs> from her. Yeah, you know, I do. Uh, yeah, you know, like uh, like the second time I watched it, uh, it's uh, Tony Collette's character in Night Cell. I'm like. You know, she kind of reminds me of Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> yeah, with that weird goop she sells or whatever. I, I, and, um... And, uh... Oh, man. And I've... 
And um, we just see them inter- We see them uh, just talk, and uh, then you see a guy sitting in the background, looking almost ominous. But he's sitting there like a like a boss. And he and he and I like this little detail. He uh, presses the piano key, which kind of which is basically like a signifier to the cops to get back on track. And then we get all three of them going like, "Ah, who's he?" And then we meet the best character in this damn movie. I, I just I just gotta say we meet we meet Benoit Blanc played by Daniel Craig oh man what do you think of this I, I gotta hear you first before I just rant about how this guy's awesome Daniel Craig in this film this is the best performance this is his best performance this is the best I've seen him in Daniel Craig he is so fucking over the top in this and so goddamn entertaining. Oh my god. And you can tell that he was having a blast with this role. He is amazing in this. It's, he is by far the best character in this film. Oh man, he is just he's amazing. I love him. He's just he's just he's basically the Sherlock Holmes, the you know, Hercule Puriot or whatever the fuck his name is. He's basically that in this movie. And, like, it's even mentioned, like, I read a New Yorker about you. you. They had a profile about you. And, you know, he's like, yeah. And he just said, I was here on behest of a client. <laughs> and uh, I love Daniel Craig in this. And, you know, I love him as Bond. I think he's a great Bond. Casino Royale is still, like, my favorite Bond movie, aside from, like, Goldfinger. But, God damn, he is so good in this movie. He's just, my God. this might yeah. be his best role. This might be my favorite performance from him. Because I'm like, you know, he plays the really calm, cool, and collected James Bond. But, oh, man, he just lets it He just lets it loose in this. And I love it. Oh, yeah. Like, this is the role where he sort of uh, is stepping out of his comfort zone. Where he's playing this very eccentric, over-the-top goofball, basically. And even with his accent, it's just so, it's just so over the top. It's, I fucking love it. He's amazing in this. this yeah, is my but, favorite role of his. Yeah, but what I love about this is that it could, it could easily just come off as over the top ridiculous, but Craig plays it just right where it just, it works, you know? I don't yeah. know. I don't know about you. No, like, it's, it, he plays it so good, he comes off as very charming. Oh my god. Like, yeah, he's the best part of this movie. He has, like, the best just parts. You can tell Ryan Johnson just fucking had... He just... He was begging for Daniel Craig to have this. He's like, dude, you gotta get this. <laughs> like, do this. I know you're gonna steal the show. Oh my god. And he's so good. He is so good in this. And, um... He's just... He said... He claims that he was, uh... A, he was... He's here on behest of a client. D- did you like that? Was that good? That was actually really good. Thank you. <laughs> I, I I practiced. Um, oh, you but, did a good job. Oh, oh my lord, it's so good. <laughs> it's uh, so. Uh, it's so good. I love it. Um, he basically explains he was here on behalf of a client, and he's he's trying to figure out what's going on here. And they're like, all right. <laughs> it's like, because the, the cops think it's suicide, but uh, Blanc thinks there's something afoot. And he does quote uh, Sherlock Holmes several times in this film. Oh, yeah, quite a bit, actually. Ah, so they're hanging out, basically. The uh, family are hanging out, and they got interrogated by the cops, and uh, then Marta shows up, and uh, um, Catherine Langford plays uh, Joni's daughter, forget her name, uh, Meg, it's Meg, which is, (laughs) oh boy, Uh, Meg, who, you know, I gotta say, I mean, she has her shitty moments, but she's actually, like, the only decent person in this family, (laughs) aside from, like, Harlan, maybe. Yeah, I would say that Meg, played by Catherine Langford, uh, on a, yeah, I agree. She's like the only like good person in this film, or at least decent person. Yeah, decent, decent. 
because everyone's not necessarily good people. Like, she has her shitty moments, but she's, like, the only, like, you know... Like, she's genuinely nice to Marta. She, you know, she genuinely is, like, interested in her. Like, when they freak out later, she just comes over and asks if she's okay. I'm like, yeah, there you go. See, there's there's not all bad people. And her family kind of make fun of her because she's going to, you know, college for a... They call it an SJW degree. So, you know, there you go. Um, you know, she's kind of the liberal of the family and... <laughs> She's kind of liberal, the family, and, um, uh, well, her and her mom are, anyway. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, she's kind of, like, the only decent person in the family. So, there you go. Uh, but she ends up meeting Block, who, t- you can tell, takes a shine to her pretty instantly. And, um... He ends up going to ask her what's up, uh, what's been going on, and uh, then we end up getting just the beginning of the untangling of the webs, or uh, the donut hole, as we end up learning later in the movie. <laughs> uh, he ends up, at, he says, uh, he basically tells Marta, he introduces himself, he tells Marta what's going on, and she thinks there's a thing afoot, and as she meets him, we end up getting a flashback. I think this is where we get the political debate. Uh, yes. We get to the night of Harlan's birthday party, and, uh, you know, everyone's hanging out, and everyone's having a good time, and uh, they're having a good old-fashioned political debate, uh, Joni and Richard are. And uh, this is, like, the part where I'm like, God, this dude's so much like my dad. This is just... It's, he's basically my dad if he were, like, more of a douche, basically, and I love my dad. <laughs> But, like, just some of the things he says, it just sounds like exactly like something my dad would say. <laughs> like, he was talking, like, when he's talking about Trump, he's like, I don't like him. Dude's an asshole. But maybe an asshole's what we need. And I'm all like, oh my god, that's my dad. <laughs> <laughs> and Joni's all like, oh yeah, well, that's what, Ger- well, I guess that's what Germany needed in 1933. And it's, and it's like, you know, this scene would be more funny if it weren't so true to life. I know, right? I will admit, I kind of winced a little bit, because I was like, when I was watching this in theaters, I'm like, oh god, this is too true to life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what did you think of it, Jacob? Yeah, again, it's so entertaining, but I, I do agree with you. Like, uh, Everything they say, it's so freaking true. That I'm just like, oh. But, you know, I still enjoy it. Yep. And, like, (laughs) and Richard, just, again, just the slimiest douche of all time. Just like, ah. No wonder Ransom turned out so badly. He just, he just comes over, he like, he gets her, he like, gets, he like, gets Mar he gets like, he gets like Marta to come over, and he starts like trying to make a point, and he's like, your family came in the right way, right? And he starts like, talking to her, and he gives her the plate, and she just kind of like, puts it up. <laughs> it's like, it's so bad, it's just like, oh god. But, um, and while, I love, I love Michael Shannon too, he's just like, awkwardly sitting there. I know, it's so... Funny. He's just awkwardly sitting there while everyone is just debating. <laughs> he, he looks like he... I love how in this movie he looks like he's been neutered. Like, especially in that scene, he just looks like he just, like... Looks like his whole family just died. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, as we end up flapping back, we see um, Marta kind of, you know... She seems like she's in a daze. And she, I love how I love how Anna de Armas plays the role almost like as she's dreaming or as she's in like a daze, which I'll yes. I'll, I'll put it that way. What, what do you think about it? Yeah, I, I would agree on that. Yeah, 100%. yeah, like you can tell, like as we learn later what happens, but you can tell like she's this the guilt is just eating her up inside because she thinks, oh lord, I accidentally killed this guy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, as she's hanging out with, uh, she's hanging out with the very annoying housekeeper called Fran, who is just telling her about this Lifetime movie that she saw, which, oh god. <laughs> uh, what do you think about Fran in this film? Fran, do not like her. 
I find her annoying. But <laughs> again, again, you know what? She's also entertaining, but man, I can't stand her. Yeah, I know. It's just like God. Like it's it's so funny to me because it's like we've all known somebody like this. I think I don't think it would land if people didn't know anyone like this. Indeed, but God, I can't stand. Her. Like the actress who did it, she did a good job, and she talks about uh, she talks about her cousin who's a you know part of the mortuary. I think is what she does. Yeah, mortuary. Which uh, by the way, great foreshadowing later. <clears throat> but uh. Yeah, she's basically, like, talking her ear off, and they're, like, smoking... <laughs> her, Megan, Meg, and, uh, and Marta like to smoke weed there sometimes. <laughs> they smoke... They're smoking the devil's lettuce. The, uh... The, uh... The, the lawn. I don't, I don't know. What are some other names for marijuana? I don't... I don't know. Yeah. You don't know either? It's... <laughs> You're just like, I don't know. He's, uh, oh lord. Anyways, so, they're hanging out, and, um, they're hanging out, and Blanc decides he's gonna talk with Marta, because he feels like Marta's gonna be more, he feels like Marta's gonna be more honest with, uh, he's gonna feel more honest than she would be than the rest of the family, and he ends up talking to her. And we end up realizing that Marta has this really weird thing with her body, I, uh, where she is unable to lie without vomiting. Uh, yes. Which is just, you know, a really weird thing. But hey, I, you know, this, all right, I'll take it. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think about this, Jacob? Have you ever heard of anyone who's had anything like this? No. Uh, someone who uh, is trying to lie but they throw up. I've never heard anything like that. Usually when a person lies you can just clearly tell that they're like nervous or something. But if you're an expert at lying then you're fucking good at what you do. But I've never seen anybody try to lie and then throw up. Yeah, it's like it's it's a really weird thing and I, I kind of, I, but I kind of like it. It, it kind of gives it, kind of gives the plot more tension. Because of, you know, what's revealed as the story goes along. Oh, absolutely. Um, she, she's all like, well, what do you, so, uh, there's also a little detail I like that I remember, I didn't notice, but he looks down and he saw her, he saw the blood splotch on her shoe. Oh, yeah. Which, (laughs) what was was that? (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, brother. You sound... It sounds very aroused by this. Hulk Hogan. Hell, yeah, brother. (laughs) Anyway. (laughs) Okay, okay, okay. So, she's all like, oh, so what do you know about all this? I heard that you, uh... Or I think think Blanc points out, he's all like, I've heard that you you can't lie without puking. She's all like, no, I'm not. And then, like, five seconds later, she just pukes into the... <laughs> she pukes into the thing and is like, okay, tell me what happened. So. Uh, so. We end up learning some of the dirt on Harlan's family. Yes, we do. Uh, and we learned that, uh... We learned that Richard, you know, douchebag that he is, uh, is cheating on his wife, uh, Linda, who is Harlan's daughter. Now, Harlan does not appreciate this, of course, and he threatens to expose his, he threatens to expose Richard for cheating on Linda, who, by the way, he cheats on her with this very ugly woman, I, I have to say. I'm not, I'm not super shallow about such things, but, Really? That, that was the best you could do. I mean, Don Johnson ain't a bad-looking man for how old he is. Oh, no, like, you could do better. Like, <laughs> seriously. Cheating on Jamie Lee Curtis. Like, how dare you? Just, how dare you? Point at you. Crime. It's, it's a, a crime. crime. It's a crime! 
Uh, he also, uh, we also learned that he cut off his daughter-in-law Joni's allowance because she was, you know, taking some of that cash for herself, which, you know, not always fun. Uh, I think we learned this earlier, but uh, Walt, uh, his son, who runs the publishing company, and he's always harassing Harlan about getting uh, adaptation rights to his books. But yeah. Harlan wouldn't let him. And we also end up learning that, uh... We also end up learning that his son, Walt, played by Michael Shannon, of course, great actor. Um, he fired Walt from the publishing company that he wrote. He's like, I want you to try and do something on your own. I'm sorry I dragged you into this. And he ends up, like, firing Walt, and Walt just looks very sad. Yeah. Like, man. And we also end up seeing that he had an altercation with his grandson, Ransom, played by Chris Evans. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. And uh, I think after that, we end up seeing uh, Ransom show up, or is that later? No, he shows up. Oh, he does show up. Uh, then we see uh, a guy come up, and we see Chris Evans pop out of the car as Ransom Drysdale, and the second best character in this movie, aside from uh, Benoit Blanc. Uh, what do you think of Chris Evans in this film? I think he is really great in this. I mean, he's great as uh, Captain America, and he's been great in a lot of other films. But man, uh, this might be might be my favorite uh, role of his. Like, he is really freaking good in this. Oh, See Chris Evans in a snuggly sweater. <laughs> it's so I love Chris Evans in this I love him as Captain America this is a tie between this movie and Captain the Captain America films as just such a phenomenal role it, he's so good he's just the biggest smug jerk ever but he's so likable that's the thing he's so fun he's so fun to watch and I love how you instantly get the suspicion that you know, he knows more than he's letting on. Yeah, you get, you get that scent. You get that feeling like, oh, I, uh, that he knows more. As you said, that he knows more than we all think. Chris Evans, he is amazing at this. Oh, my God, As he's so said, good. He's, he's, he's the biggest smug and like, oh, look at me, I'm so hot. But, man, is he entertaining and likable. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, this kind of, I was going to bring this up as we get into the plot, but I love the bait and switch of this movie. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, you think, oh, it's going to be this type of movie, and then you realize, oh, it was a murder mystery the whole time. You know, and, and Ryan Johnson has kind of a knack, and there's people who, this is either the thing people love about Ryan Johnson or just can't stand at all. It's that um, Ryan Johnson loves to play with uh, conventions. He loves to, as they say, and I hate saying this, but uh, he loves to subvert expectations. That hurt me even just to say it. But yes, he does like to do that. And you know, uh, I, I, it works here, I think. What, what do you think? Yeah, uh, uh, I'm willing to make an exception with this, uh, with this film. Yeah, it feels more natural to the plot, you know. Yeah, it, it fits well with the story, I'd say. Yeah, but um, I gotta say, one of the biggest strengths of this movie is that it's kind of like Predator or From Dusk Till Dawn, in the way that it's, it's kind of a bait-and-switch. I really like the bait-and-switch of the narrative. Oh, yeah, me too. Like, you think it's gonna it's this typical uh, murder mystery, and then it's like, oh, it's not. It's something else. You, like, you first think it's gonna be a murder mystery, and then you think it's gonna be like, oh, how's she gonna get away with it? And then it goes back to, oh, it's a murder mystery. I, I, it's just, ah, so good. So good. So good. Love it. So, uh, we end up seeing, as Marta is telling them what's happening, what actually happened the night that Harlan died. And we end up revealing that uh, Marta was hanging out with Harlan, and uh, Harlan was just having a good time. And I gotta say, Christopher Plummer is great in this film. 
again. I just gotta say it. What What do you think about Christopher Plummer? Oh, Christopher Plummer. He's great, and he's great, and he was great in anything that he touched. Uh, he's also really great in this. And even though he's gone, you still feel his presence, as you said before. Oh yes, um, I, I I love his character Harlan Thrombey in this film. He's so fun, and even though he's old, you can tell he's like this. He, he's so fun, and he's so filled with life, even as he's grown older. And his mother's still alive, by the way. So it's like, how old is this man? Like, how old is how old is he? How, or no, he's eighty five. I'm like, how old is his mom? What the fuck? Hundred, hundred something. It has to be. Has to be. Or maybe she had him when he was really young, or she was really young. I don't know, but it is, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, his mom's just there, and she's like this old lady. She can barely eat. There's a hilarious scene where Michael Shannon is just yelling at her like, Nana, you want to eat? To to eat? Nana? And like, Linda comes over and is like, just stop. <laughs> I, I love Walt. He's just like a bumbling idiot throughout this movie. I mean, you could say, oh, well, they're all bumbling idiots. But, uh, <laughs> Walt especially. I mean, you kind of feel bad for him, but you're like, damn, this dude's a fucking idiot. This dude's dumb, but he's fun. He's fun to watch. Yeah, I love watching him. So, Marta ends up bringing him upstairs, and, again, I, I just love him. He's like that cool granddad who gives you all the awesome presents for Christmas. Yeah, perfect way to describe it. He's exactly like that. Even though, apparently, he raised all of these not-fun people to be around. Which, you're just like, damn, dude. <laughs> Should do better. <laughs> uh, we end up seeing um, We end up seeing him just hanging out, and they play a game of Go, I think is what it's called. Yeah, go. And, um... <laughs> uh, we end up seeing that Marta often beats him at go, and he just, he just doesn't like it. He's like, oh, I'm so old! I'm so old! And he, like, he'll overturn the board if he loses. He's all like, why can't I beat you at this game? She's all like, well, I'm not trying to win. I'm just trying to make a beautiful pattern. Which, again, you're like, oh, okay, she's she's too good for her own good. We get it. Yeah. But you know, it. but it is. But I like that. That's kind of the snag of the movie. It, it's great. This scene is just great foreshadowing. Oh, absolutely! It's foreshadowing, it's foreshadowing his death, this. and it foreshadows like even to the end of the movie. And Man, he, the foreshadowing in this, like he's, it foreshadows his death. To be honest, he starts like he like list. He decides to randomly iron out his regrets while he's walking up the stairs. He talks to Marta while she's prepping his uh, while she's prepping his uh, medication. He says, "Oh, I could have been nicer to." And then he says, uh, "My favorite line of this is when he says, "Oh, I could have been nicer to ransom." And he's like, "Oh, ransom." And he starts saying, this "Reminds me so much of myself." Which I think is interesting, because, you know, Ransom isn't just a villain of this movie. It's almost like he's a villainous foil of, of Arlen. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah, and he also says my favorite line in the movie. He's like, oh, Ransom, he's too stupid to... Stupid, and he treats life like a game, and he says, doesn't even know this... He doesn't even know the difference between a stage knife and a real one. He, like, plops the knife on the, on the table. <laughs> and uh, Marta ends up, and he's like, I, I want some of the good stuff. So for his birthday, she's going to give him some morphine. And um, turns out Marta accidentally, in her quotes, uh, mixed up his medications. And oh boy, that's not good. And she's like, oh dear. And she's like, what, did you give me the good stuff? And she's all like, uh, let, let's just not call it that right now. And he basically is like, and then Harlan's kind of murder mystery author brain just <laughs> kicks in the full gear. Yes. <laughs> I love this scene. He just gives her this very elaborate plan. <laughs> and he's so, like, nonchalant about it. He's a little like, you're just going to do this, and, you know, it'll be fine. You, you'll, it's fine. You'll, you'll be fine. You'll just, you know, it'll be okay. Yeah, just do it, all right? <laughs> just, just do what I say. It'll, 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 it'll go fine. <laughs> I love this movie! 
Ugh. So good. Oh, it's so good. So he basically gives her this, and he basically gives her this, um, exp- this just explanation on what to do. And I love the editing of the scene as he's narrating what's going on and she's doing it. Oh, it's so good. Oh my God, it's so good. And it, she just, he, she, just, he explains it, and she goes down, she does it. She ends up seeing Harlan's mother, the grandma, just sitting there, and she just says, "Grandson, are you back again already?" What do you think? Oh, yeah, you know, she's just old, and she's probably losing some marbles. <laughs> uh, good foreshadowing later. Uh, <laughs> Jeez. So, yeah, and, and of course, she's just a bag of nerves. Like, she goes up the stairs, she gets his clothes, and she follows it mostly. I think she fucks up when she turns the wrong way. Oh, yeah, she turns the wrong way. That's where she fucks up. Yeah, and <laughs> it's just... <laughs> this is so good. This shit is so good, and and he basically just tells her, "You're gonna leave at twelve o five She leaves at twelve o five, and Michael Shannon checks his watch. And as he said before, he saw her leave, so he doesn't think that you know they're you know they're bad or anything. And um, we end up uh, <laughs> um. And she ends up dressing up in his clothes and going down, and then Walt mistakes her for uh, Harlan and says, Go back to bed, Dad! Then she goes upstairs, and... Ah, it's so good. I love this scene. I love it, too. It's such a good scene. Oh, my God, it's so good. Um, she's also like, I can't lie without vomiting, and she's all like, dog... She's all like, look, don't lie. Just tell him partially. Just partially tell the truth. She's like, fine. So she leaves, and I love how the scene is both entertaining and tense. Yeah. The, 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 fact, that, the fact that Ryan Johnson was able to pull off, pull that off, it's just crowd-pleasing. Like, Matt prophecy, Ryan Johnson. It's tense while also being extremely entertaining. And then she turned... And then she turns back while when he's about to slice his own throat, and when he does, it's really sad. You're like, dang, yeah. I like that guy. Yeah, I liked him. And um, so after we see that, it uh, again kind of goes back to the bait and switch I was talking about earlier. You think it's gonna be a murder mystery, and now it's all like, well, shit, this woman Marta Cabrera is now in a pickle. She's now in a pickle. How the hell are we going to get out of this? Like, oh no. Forget about it. Anyways. So that night... Sorry, I have to collect my thoughts there. So sorry for the silences. I have to collect my thoughts sometimes. So that night, it's after the funeral. Marta shows up, and of course, she's just... You know, again, I kind of like how she's in a daze, like I said before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you can tell she's just torn up by, you know, what happened. She's She doesn't... She legit just does not know what to do. And her mother's also an undocumented immigrant, so there you go. Now, that's also bad. Um, oh, boy. Uh, we, see, uh, we see Fran and them hanging out, and the Fran's talking their ear off, and they're smoking weed, and... <laughs> they're smoking marijuana, casually. And uh, Walt walks over, and he's all like, Have you guys been smoking grass? And they just kind of look at him awkwardly. And then he's just like, ugh, okay. He walks over to Marta and just hugs her and basically says, yeah, you were good to Dad, and, you know, we took you in, and we wanted to help you out since, you know, you were so good to Dad. And you think, oh, you know, it's actually kind of nice, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> you know, maybe maybe they're not that bad, you know? I, or, well, Walt isn't, I don't think. But, you know, I mean, you think, oh, they're like, oh, okay, like, that's nice, you know? Like, you know, it's a, it's a kind thing to do. Oh, you're actually, uh, you're actually decent for once. Yeah, but then, you know, as you say, when you see later, you're kind of like, huh, was that true? I don't know. 
I guess we'll figure it out as it goes along. Mm-hmm. So, we end up, I think this is, I think we get to the part, uh, I think we get to the part where the family's all hanging out, and, uh, they're just, and, uh, oh yeah, Ransom shows up, and, uh, oh man, he's swaggering in, he's got his, like, little coat on, and bro, the costume designs, and I, I gotta, I gotta talk about the costume design, the costume design in this film is amazing. I also love the colors in this movie, like Jacob said earlier. Yeah, it's so vibrant. Everything pops out. It's so colorful. Oh my god, yeah. And, you know, usually in these kind of movies... Well, you know, you, you could say the Agatha Christie is a little more colorful. But again, yeah, the colors. I just I love the colors in this film. I usually don't talk about colors in film. I, I don't know. It's not something that always pops out to me. Unless I'm watching, like, a Wes Anderson film. Or, you know, a yeah. noir film. But, man, the colors in this movie are just... Ugh, they're outstanding. Absolutely. I and like this film got fucking robbed that it didn't get nominated for Best Costume and Makeup. I know, dude. Ugh. I also love uh, Chris Evans' design. He just, like, wears, like, sweater, and he wears, like, a little coat, and he has, like, a scarf. <laughs> and that's it. Oh, my lord. Yeah, he's, like, the smuggest douchebag. Of all time, and I love again. I love him in this movie. He's so fun. He's so fucking entertaining. Oh such my a, god! Such a f- fucking smug. You can just see it all all over his face. But my god, he's so entertaining. Like he could have easily just come off as awful and unlikable, but Chris Evans just plays it to a part where he, he's kind of again. He's just so fun to watch. He really is. And they're just hanging out. He gets, like, some, like, cookies. And, by the way, those look actually pretty good. He gets, like, some cookies, and he makes fun of, uh, Benal Blanc. He's all like, oh, uh, CSI, KFC? <laughs> There's some great lines in this, like that. Like, man, like, you could tell Chris Evans was having a blast. Oh, man, I mean, I bet he was looking for something kind of different after Captain America. And, I, you know, apparently he lobbied hard for this role. Like, he really wanted to do this. And Chris and, and Ryan Johnson was like, eh. But then after a while, he was convinced, and I'm glad he was, because he's amazing in this. Yeah, Chris Evans, he's like, you know what? i played Captain America for so long, I need to play something else. You know what? I'll play a fucking smug. And I'm going <laughs> to do a damn good job at it. Oh my lord, and he's so good in this. He's just, he shows up, he just go. he's just, he starts firing at all cylinders. He's all like, hey Meg, how's the SJW uh, degree coming along? And uh, the, the younger kid who's Walt's son just kind of gives like a little smile. And I will say, the only kind of weak part of this movie is uh, the, the kid, played by uh, the dude, the kid from It. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, he doesn't really have much of a character. He's just kind of like a one-note joke. Yeah, it's just there. He's always on his phone. It's just, and uh, uh, fortunately for me, his name is Jacob, so. <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. It's like, uh, <laughs> like, my God. He gives the You're rest, he gives the Jacob other Jacobs poorly. a bad name. <laughs> You're representing Jacobs poorly. Oh, <laughs> I love how they go. I love how they go. Uh, I love how they start. Mo- they start insulting each other. It's like alt right troll. And, she's, and he says, "Liberal snowflake," and <laughs> Michael <laughs> Shannon just goes, "I don't know what any of that means." <laughs> <laughs> it's so good. He's like, and she's like, "I bet he was doxing Syrian refugees." He's like, "I was not." <laughs> Another oh thing God. I like about Ransom's character, another thing about the bait and switch of the movie, is that you think, oh, okay, he's just like a douchebag, whatever. The family doesn't like him for whatever reason, or well, they they don't like him because he's a dick. I I think that's why they don't like him. What, what do you think, Jacob? <laughs> yeah, they don't like him because Ransom is Ransom. Yeah, basically. It's just super dickish to everybody. And, <laughs> oh, God. 
And uh, the family just it just kind of just kind of starts. Uh, and I love how Chris Evans plays it like he knows something's off, but he's just like he's just like not gonna say nothing. He like he knows more than he's letting on. Yes, I just I, I love it. So good. Oh, dude. Ah, he's so good in this. Uh, see, we do not deserve this film, but that's what we got, and we, we love it. Yeah, we've earned it somehow, and thank you. Uh, yeah, Richard, being a douche, just starts, like, wailing on Walt's son, and Walt just doesn't take it. He doesn't take this besmirch of his son, and he's all like, all right, you want to go? And then he's like, all right, Skip, you want to go? And they start, like, they start, like, slapping each other. <laughs> they start, like, slapping each other, and they're all, like, yelling. And then Ransom's just sitting there eating his cookies and just gives a nice smile and just says, we got to do this more often. <laughs> God, he is... Uh, Chris Evans is so good in this. It's just... Uh. God, he's so good. I love him in this film. I also kind of like how this film almost tricks you into thinking maybe Ransom's, like, the secretly this decent guy who just doesn't like his family because they're... Just a bunch of dicks. Yeah. And it turns out later he's just a, he's awful. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so yeah, um, so Jacob ends up telling him what happened. Uh, or uh, the other, the evil Jacob, not the not the good one. Um, he's not really evil. He's just a, he's just. A, <laughs> I can't even so describe him. Just so one note. Yeah, he's one note. <laughs> and he basically explains that he was in the bathroom just hanging out and possibly masturbating. You know, we don't see it. No. You know, it's it's weird. It, it's funny how these, these like, grown people are just so immature. I, I like how immature they all play it. No. <laughs> They're almost like a bunch of overgrown children. such a bunch of overgrown children. Like, they're poking like, fun at him for possibly masturbating, even though when we see the scene, like, he's not even doing anything. He's just, like, sitting there, like, texting on his phone. And he overhears Harlan and Ransom arguing, and he doesn't know exactly what they said, but uh, he basically says that he only heard him say, my will, and I'm warning you. And Ransom said, I'm warning you. So then, <laughs> so then, uh, Walt starts walking around, and he's all like, I, I think I know what it is. I think our father finally got the sense to cut this worthless brat out of the will. And then he just starts, and then he just goes on this rant. <laughs> he just goes on this rant about how he's going to have to, like, kick all these fashion drugs and sell his house and whatnot, and he's not even getting a single red dime, as he says. Uh, like Dad liked to say, and he, he's like, "If you think we're gonna help you, you're nuts." And then Chris Evans just mouths, "Wow, <laughs> it's so good! Oh my god, I love this movie." God, we don't deserve this movie. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. And then, and then, uh, and then Richard just says, "Son." He's like, son, and he just says, father. <laughs> son, father. He's so like, did Harlem cut, did Harlan cut you out of the will? And he says, yep. And then in a, uh, in a very great example of just quality parenting, uh, Richard just says, well, it seems like he had the strength to do what none of us were strong enough to do. And hopefully this will get you to finally grow up. And it's like, yep, that that's some quality parenting right there. <laughs> oh yeah, like, yeah, give 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 him an award. Oh yes, Woo. give him all the awards. <laughs> give him all the awards, baby. Hell yeah. <laughs> And uh, then, and then, and then, uh, Joni decides to smugly be like, "Oh, nothing right is ever easy." And then Chris, and then I mean, Walt's rant didn't piss him off, but that, but that, when she said that, that pissed him off, and he just starts saying, "Up your ass, Joni! You've been sucking on this family's tit for far too long." And 
<laughs> and Meg's just like, oh, up your ass. Very nice. And then he's like, well, well, eat shit. Eat shit. Eat shit. And everyone just starts yelling at each other. It's so good. <laughs> it's so good. These people are so immature. Exactly. It's like, again, they're almost like children. They're all like overgrown children. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh my goodness. And uh, you can hear Michael Shannon go, I'm not eating one iota of shit <laughs> in the background. <laughs> and Blanc is just like, we gotta leave. <laughs> you know? It's like, we gotta get out of here. Oh yeah, some moments I skipped. Um... Oh, yeah, there's some moments I skipped. Uh, earlier in uh, in the evening, after Marta goes outside, uh, she sees Blanc, and Blanc decides that she doesn't have much of a reason to hide, and he thinks that she has more of a an interest in this case, and he thinks she would be the most likely to help him because she's not going to get anything out of it, going back to that. She's too kind for her own good thing, but it's like, okay, I, I'll deal with it. All right? <laughs> like, okay, this time. But never again. <laughs> like they're laying it on thick, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, I like how he quotes Sherlock Holmes. He says, "There's a game afoot in this whole affair." And he's like, "I know it, and you know it." <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's uh, uh well, oh, thank best you. Character. Oh, he's best the best character in this movie. I can't wait for Knives Out too. Yes. It better be as good as this one. I'm just, I'm, if not, <laughs> I'm throwing my just cards out the blunk. window. Just give me more blunk, please. And uh, he talks about gravity's rainbow and how it's, you know... Talk about gravity's rainbow and how he he doesn't... He's never read it, but, you know, he, he, he likes to compare it to the first starting of a murder mystery. And then he gets Marta to come with him. And then later... And then later we then earlier that day we see that she's walking around and we see that she's subtly um <laughs> she subtly uh is like trying to tamper with the evidence like she ends up ta- she ends up uh like messing up the tape walking over her prints and block is like no wait don't do that <laughs> you know uh and um Oh, she, like, gets, like, the... Oh, yeah, when she was climbing up, she, like, knocked over one of the wooden things, so she, like, throws it over. But the dogs end up getting it. And one of the little details I like is that the dogs kind of... They kind of give a hint that who the murderer might be. Oh, yes. And uh, as Rance... And as uh, Blanc says, best judge of character is a dog. Oh, yeah, because dogs can sense everything. Also, I like dogs, so there's that as well. Uh, so, oh god, where was I? Oh, yes. Um, they start arguing, and, um, they're in the outside, and they're just hanging out, and I forget exactly what they say. Uh, isn't this where we get to the will reading, or is that later? Uh, no, we, no, we get to it. Okay. So... The Lawyer shows up, played by the famous Yoda himself, director of Little Shop of Horrors and Death at a Funeral, two very underrated films, by the way. Um, Death at a Funeral is, anyway. Uh, Little Shop of Horrors is excellent as well. Uh, that's a, though I am biased, that is a film I watched in my childhood. But Frank Oz, Yoda himself, plays... Uh, the lawyer of the family. Hell yeah. And, uh, he's j- he shows up and he's like, alright, I'm gonna read this will reading here. And everyone's like, oh good, <laughs> let's see who gets everything. So, he ends up, uh, they end up walking inside and everyone's all prepped for the, um... Everyone's all prepped for who got it and everything, and Marta's in there, and Ransom's just sitting in the background, just, uh, and he's just sitting, stacking, uh, stacking, um, he's stacking chess pieces. Mm-hmm. And he's just in his little sweater. That looks very cozy. 
Oh my lord. I mean, I've never really worn a lot of sweaters, because I, I just, I don't know. But uh, that, that one does look pretty comfy. Yeah, I need to find that sweater on my... <laughs> it looks comfy, and I'm not a big sweater guy either, but that one looks so comfy. So, um, uh, the, the guy, so the lawyer ends up looking at the thing, he's like, oh, well this is actually pretty simple, so... Let's get through this. Um, and he kind of reads it off, and he goes, yada, 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 I give everything to Marta Cabrera. And everyone, and that's kind of one of the big pin drops of the movie. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> then, <laughs> then, um... Then he ends up saying that all the publishing companies, everything is going to Marta Cabrera. And everyone just starts freaking out, and Linda is just like, no, this can't be right. And um, she looks at it, and she just starts, everyone just starts freaking out and yelling amongst each other. And. <laughs> oh, Lord. This scene is both hilarious and uncomfortable. What do you think of this scene, Jacob? When he starts just... When the whole breakdown happens. Oh my god. Like, I fucking rolled on the floor when I first watched it. Like, my god, it's so hilarious. I just find it straight up hilarious. Yeah, back to the... Back to basically all of these people are just overgrown children. Again. Like, this is how they react. Yeah, they just start, like, yelling at the... They start yelling at the lawyer it's wrong. And... The, like, lawyer just, she, like, Linda tells the lawyer to shove the will up his ass, and she just, like, <laughs> she's like, we gotta plan something, we gotta, we gotta stop this, and my favorite part is when they go, like, this is our house, we are the thrombies, god damn it, this is still our house, and they look back at the lawyer, and he's all like, oh yes, I, uh, oh yes. And I also leave the house to Marta Cabrera. And then she just goes back and just starts laying into her. And she's all like, oh, you bitch. You little bitch. She starts, like, running up on her. And Marta's just terrified. And she's all like, oh, what? And she's all like, oh, what? She's like, what What were you doing? What, where did you get in on this? Were you in on this? Like, were you boinking my father? And Meg's just like, boinking? <laughs> It's so good. And Ransom, of course, just starts laughing his ass off. Yep, he's just enjoying this. <laughs> he's loving this. He just he starts laughing his ass off and he just walks out of the room. <laughs> he's like, man, this is too good. <laughs> this is so good. I love it. It's so, oh man, it's so, yeah, it's such a fun, oh, it's so good. And she ends up like hiding in the car. And she ends up going to her car and hiding in there. And she's just, like, chilling out in the car. And <laughs> then we see Ransom pull up. And he does the same exact motion that his dad was doing, like, get in the car. And uh, she ends up getting in the car with Ransom. Uh, excuse me. She ends up getting into the car with Ransom, and it's uh, it's quite the experience, honestly. It is. It really is. And she's he's he bit, and then he, as he drives away, he says, "I think this was the best thing for all of you." And then he drives off. <laughs> Which again, really, the bait and switch of the narrative comes in a uh, Ransom because you think at first he's like, "Oh yeah, smug douchebag." You kind of expect this when you're in a rich family. And, uh, and, uh, then it kind of seems like, oh, maybe there's, like, some more dimensions to this guy. Maybe he's just, like, maybe he just acts like a douche because he doesn't like his family. Or something like that. Because you get, uh, or, that's the vibe I got when I first saw this movie. What, what do you think, Jacob? Yeah, no, honestly, I got the exact same vibes. I was like, okay, maybe he's, uh, maybe he does care about his family and he's just a douche. I'm like, maybe he just doesn't like his family. Or, yeah, just straight up like that. I just I just can't stand my family. But, man, I enjoy watching them. 
Oh, my lord, yes. It's, it's very fun to watch. Indeed. Uh, <laughs> and, she, and then he's all like, okay, seriously, what the hell? He's like, okay, seriously, though, what the hell? And then he's all, and then he basically explains, okay, I know my grand. He ends up taking her to this, like, restaurant. And he basically just says, okay, I know my granddad didn't commit suicide, so you're going to tell me what happened. And he ends up, like, coercing her into telling the truth. And you're like, damn, all right. And uh, we end up seeing uh, them hang out. Or uh, we end up, uh, and Marta tells him what happens. And yes. uh... So... She tells him what happened, and he's all like, huh, shit. And you think, oh, well, all right, cool. And he offers to help her uh, in exchange for a share of the inheritance, and she's like, fine. And he's all like, well, why are you helping me? And he's all like, well, I don't really like my family, so fuck it, basically. Yeah. And, uh... <laughs> Marta ends up going back, he ends up driving her back to her house, and she just hangs out at her house, and, um, she hangs out at her house, and, um, she ends up waking up the next day, and a lot of shit's been going down while she was asleep. Uh, yeah, there's people all over the place, and you see Walt come in, and, uh, it's, just, it's a fiasco, I'll put it that way. Oh, boy. So, basically, the Thrombies try to get the money back in other ways, and Walt ends up realizing... Walt somehow figures out that uh, her mother is an undocumented immigrant and attempts to attempts to blackmail her into giving the money back, but basically she ends up throwing it right back on him and says, well, I have all the resources now. So, ha! And ends up, like, locking him out. But uh, then she ends up getting a blackmail note in the mail. Yay! Yay! Oh, God. Uh, with a partial photocopy of Harlan's toxicology report, which is basically the toxins that were inside of his blood at the point of his death. And she's like, ah, shit. So she calls Ransom. And then Ransom's all like, okay. Uh, so Ransom ended up driving to the medical examiner's office. And, uh, but it has burned down. <laughs> Uh oh, not good. No, not good at all. Yeah, I remember when we were watching this film, and my dad was like, and me and my dad were just kind of trying to guess what the twist was. I'm like, all right, so, do you think that Harlan's still alive somehow? And I'm all like, I don't think so. I don't think that's it. it. Has to be something going on here. Yeah, it has to be something else. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> it's like, well, wh wh what do you think it is? I'm like, I don't know, man. I'm just, I, I don't know. Like, I have no idea. So. So. What happens is that she ends up getting an email proposing a rendezvous with the blackmailer at a particular time. And, um. They end up, uh. They end up deciding to set up the meeting with the blackmailer at that moment. And they end up going over to this, like, abandoned building somewhere. I forget exactly where it is. And, um... Yeah. Oh, no, this is where they, uh... No, this is where the car chase happens, right? Yeah, this, that is later? The car chase. this is where we get to the car chase. So... <laughs> So, as they're about to leave the place, uh, Blanc and the cops end up spotting them, and, uh, then a car chase happens, and, again, somehow both gripping and hilarious at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's, both, it's both exhilarating and entertaining. Exactly. And hilarious. 
uh, they end up driving, and Marta's car is just so old. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't work right. It's not, like, speeding up, and the cops are just, like, chasing after her, and then they end up, uh, and then they end up just, like, pulling over, and just, like, Keith Stanfield, just without a hitch, just says, well, that is the lamest car chase I've ever been a part of. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's so good. It's like, okay, lamest car chase of all time. It's like, oh, so good. <laughs> oh, yeah, later there... Oh, yeah, earlier I forgot to mention there was this scene where Blanc just, like, goes over to the grandma, and he basically just goes like, I think you're more perceptive than you put up, than you, uh, than you, uh, claim to be, and... He basically, like, gets some information out of her, which, that's just, like, hilarious to me. I don't know why. Oh, it's so funny. I agree. <laughs> why are you talking to her? Uh, they pull her over, and it's like, okay, that's the... I'm just like, okay, that's the... Alright. <laughs> it's like, alright. Uh, Ransom's under arrest for, um... Uh, Ransom's under arrest because, uh... Because Grandma ended up seeing him go into the house himself. So, uh, they take Ransom away, and Marta decides to go over to the, uh, to the, um, the rendezvous point. And she ends up going inside and seeing a body. She's like, hello. And then she ends up finding Fran, who has been drugged. And uh, her drug. And she like has like a spider crawling on her. Um, and Marta is kind of scared and unsure what to do. But instead of running off and leaving her to die, uh, she decides to perform CPR and calling an ambulance. Because, you know, damn it, that's the right thing to do. Yep. On the one hand, I'm kind of like, oh, Lord. But at the same time, you're like, you know what? It, it kind of warms my heart there's still some decency in this world. Yep. Um, Indeed. Oh, yeah, and by the way, she, like, grabs her in the process. She, like, leaps back to life for a second. And she says, you did this. As she's, like, f overdosing. Mm -hmm. Um... So, she performs CPR and calls an ambulance, and Blanc shows up and is like, well, I'm impressed, you've managed to... <laughs> it's like, well, I'm impressed, this is the most inept, uh, or what is it? You're the most inept, uh, crime, or criminal mastermind I've ever seen, or something like that. I forget exactly what he says, but yeah. he says something to that effect, and she's like, oh, well, I guess, uh, there you go. And she ends up finally confessing what actually happened. Um, though Blanc says, uh, Ransom already told us what happened, so, there you go. She's like, ugh, okay. So, so basically she's about to, they go back to the house and she's about to confess to the family what happened and give them her, their, you know, will back under the rule of the Slayer rule, which is basically if you murder somebody and you get something under a will, you're forced to give it back. Um, so at the house, she ends up finding, she ends up realizing that the, where the full copy of where the toxology report was, was in, can was in Fran's weed stash. Uh, she ends up giving it to Blanc without reading it herself. Uh, without actually reading it, she goes in to tell the family what happened, and, you know, Walt's just smiling, the rest of the family are just kind of sitting there, and then, uh, Blanc just shows up like, wait! <laughs> and then, uh, he basically kind of gives him a chewing out for not being nice to Marta. Yeah. And um, then he ends up bringing her into another room. And then we get probably the best scene in this movie aside from the family argument scene. Uh, Jacob, do you want to take it from here? Uh, you know what? I'll let you take this one. All right. <laughs> what would I have said then, but... I guess Jacob has, uh, is taken uh, from this movie to subvert expectations and says, Ha! You're doing it! So, alright. <laughs> so, Blanc basically reveals everything he thinks happened. He's kind of put it together. And despite his buffoonish, you know, eccentric 
exterior. He's actually really good at his job, which is why they called him in the first place, or whoever called him in the first place. Uh, so, he reveals what actually happened, and he basically tells her that Harlan didn't commit suicide, or Harlan wasn't unintentionally poisoned, and the toxology report, it actually revealed that uh, his blood levels were normal. And it's actually really sad. And he says, if you... And he just says, you didn't actually switch the medications. Uh, 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 well, he basically explains that um, he thinks that after Ransom learned that Harlan was going to be leaving everything to Marta, he decided to swap the contents of... He decided to swap the name tags of the medications on uh, her medication and ended up stealing the antidote, as we saw before, so that Marta would accidentally kill Harlan and would thus just be able, would give up the inheritance. But, because Marta's a good nurse, uh, she actually gave him the correct medication because she just recognized it because she's done it a thousand times. And as Blanc says to her, and actually one of the scenes, more emotional scenes, she says, uh, you did it because you were a good nurse, because you'd done it a thousand times. And if he hadn't have, if he had have waited as if he had listened to you and waited, he'd probably still be alive today. And it's like, damn, it's really sad. It's like, man, it's sad. And she had only thought she'd poisoned him because she read the label wrong. Um, so when, but, and then, and then, uh, then we just get just the part where he's just putting everything together, and I love when Lakeith is all like, really, like, we're gonna be doing this, and the Wagner's just like, dude, let him. <laughs> uh, I love Wagner in this movie. He's so good. I love both the cops so in this good. movie. They're, they're both really fun to watch. I know, right? It's so hilarious. He's just like, dude, dude, just let him. He's like, yeah, just let, just let this happen. And then he just starts, like, giving all the... And then he start like... And he, like, literally quotes the lines that he said to her. It's nuts. I love it. <laughs> so, when the death was reported as a suicide, Ransom decided to anonymously hire Blanc. He was the guy who hired Blanc earlier to expose Marta. But then, later, Fran ended up seeing Ransom tampering with the crime scene and ended up sending him the blackmail note. So he was actually the blackmail victim. Um, because, and he puts it like, well, you know, but when he went to the right time and he ended up just switching it up so he could make it look like Marta was the one who, uh, was getting the blackmail note. So, Fran ended up seeing Ransom tampering it and sent him the blackmail note. And she ends up going, she's like, ha ha, I knew it, I knew you were a dick. And he's like, yeah, friend, you know, and then he ends up like, he ends up like just reckless style, just like grabs the needle and just shoots her up with it. You're like, damn, I would, I, okay. <laughs> I'm like, damn, I, 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 she was annoying, but I don't think she deserved to die. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Like, certainly she was annoying and opportunistic and selfish, but I don't, I don't think she deserved to die like that. Damn. Okay. Uh, then he, but then he realized his plan failed when it realizes that Marta wasn't responsible for Harlan's death, but Marta still thought she was, so he decided to send the note to Marta, and he ended up burning down the medical examiner's office to destroy the evidence of her innocence. And you may be wondering, how, how did Fran get the information about Harlan's death? Remember her cousin? She worked at the medical examiner's? There you go. There you go. So, he then overdosed Fran with the morphine, and he was intending for Marta to get caught with Fran's corpse. But, that didn't happen, because Marta, uh, the real snag to Ransom's plan is that Marta is just too good of a person. And you know, I would think that's kind of cheesy, but you know what? I actually think it kind of worked. What, what, what do you think, Jacob? I think it works, too. <laughs> I really think so. Yeah, it's kind of like, you know... I, 
in any other movie, this would just be corny, and people would be like, this is dumb. Like, who, like, who, who would do that? Like, come on. Like, nobody's that good. Yeah. But Marta, Marta's a good person. And I, I kind of like that's the snag to his plan, is that she's just a good person. And mm-hmm. he just kind of didn't think of that. No. As, as Batman said, you think, deep down, everyone's as ugly as you. You know, there you go. Where's the trailer? <laughs> Oh, Lord. So, Ransom. So, Ransom just goes like, okay, this is just stupid with two O's. (laughs) 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 Which is just... (laughs) Which is just like, oh, my God. Only Chris Evans, man. He could get away with that. It's just like, (laughs) what? (laughs) <laughs> oh my lord and he's all like uh, this is dumb and then he she just goes like alright fine we'll get the truth out of you eventually and she ends up going and he's all like alright fine uh, I'll just tell you something no cameras no nothing I'll just tell you and he just gives like this vicious little monologue about how you think you can just steal this house from us our birthright and then I love how Blanc just starts laughing and goes like, Ho, oh, oh, ho, that is hooey! Man, uh, Harlem bought this in the 80s from some guy in Pakistan. And then Chris Evans just gets so annoyed and just goes like, Ah, shut up! Shut up! <laughs> oh, yeah, they, oh, yeah, by the way, Marta gets a call and she's like, Oh, yes? Oh, that's good. Oh, thank you. And she, like, hangs up and she's like, Fran's ready to talk. And then they're about to take her and then uh, Ransom just, <laughs> Ransom just goes like, shut up! They're back to the scene, though, but Ransom just goes like, ah, shut up! They're like, stop with the Kentucky Fried Chicken Longhorn f- Leghorn Drawl! And he's like, and then he just confesses that he did it. He's like, you know what, like, I did it, okay? She ends up lying, <laughs> and she ends up, and then... This in the biggest, like, in this to the funniest mic drop in history, she ends up vomiting on him. <laughs> and then, and then, and then Chris Evans is like, I love his response. He's just like, What the shit? What the shit? Yeah, like, Ransom gets the best lines in this movie. He really does. Him and Blanc. He gets like the donut, uh, oh, yeah, with the donut hole monologue. Oh, so good. So freaking good. Oh my god. It's just... Ugh. So... So damn good. So, he ends up realizing... And he... <laughs> I love Wagner just goes like... She vomited! She was lying! And then and then Lakeith Stanfield's just like... Yeah, dude, we know. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like... And I love how she's all like... Yeah, that's right. Fran's dead. <laughs> just like... <laughs> I love how... I love, I love how she's. I don't know why, just how she says it is just so funny. It's so hilarious. It's almost like she just like did a badass thing. She's like, that's like her one liner. She's like, yep, Fran's dead, and you just confessed to her murder. And then Wagner just also just drops the mic, and he was recording him the whole time, and he's like, and then <laughs> I love Chris Evans. He's just like, well, one for a penny. Picks up a knife and just like launches at her, and this slow mo, like Blanc is like, oh shit, and Marta's like, no, and then the cops are like running at her, and then just like, this is my like perfect just moment where the what you think's gonna happen doesn't, and it, it just it turns out it's a fake knife. Yep, and he and then I love his, I, I love his uh, ransom's line. He's like, shit. Yeah, I just love his line. It's, it reminds me of Leon the Professional. Uh, you ever seen Leon the Professional? I have not. Oh, damn it. That's going to that's gonna spoil a part of the movie, but never mind. But basically, I love how he just goes like, oh, shit. <laughs> he just gets arrested. <laughs> it, was, it was super dramatic. Like, it was so, it's like slow-mo, and just dramatic music. And then it's like, oh, it's a fake knife. And then he's just ransom. It's like, shit. <laughs> I love how he's just casual, just like, 
ah, shit. And he gets, like, <laughs> he gets arrested. Just, just that alone, like, Chris Evans deserves an award. Shit. Oh, my lord. <laughs> uh, I love it. <laughs> oh, my lord. So good. And they end up arresting Ransom, and it's just, uh, we end up getting the, basically the end of the movie. So, now we're at the epilogue. Blanc and Marta talk, and she's all like, she's all like, well, did you ever, when did you figure out I was gonna do it? He's like, oh, early on. <laughs> I love how he just says, oh, I just, early on. Just kind of casually like, oh, I knew you were involved from the start of this whole thing. <laughs> As he said, he noticed a, a, a spot of blood on her shoe. Uh, Linda ends up, um, the, one of the dogs that show up earlier, ends up giving Linda a baseball that um, she ends up taking, which, by the way, reminds me of the subplot where Richard uh, Richard goes in to try and get rid of the evidence of the, um, of, uh, the letter. Uh, the letter that he has that's gonna th expose him to Harlan, and it, and when he reads the letter, there's just nothing there. So he's like, ah! So he ends up just like throwing it away, and he ends up th and he thinks that he's outsmarted Harlan, and he throws the baseball out of the out of the house. A dog ends up getting it, gives it the block, and Blanc plays with it for a little bit, and he plays fetch it with it with the dog, and the dog ends up bringing it back to Linda, and she ends up going back to the goes back to Harlan's office. And as she mentions earlier in the movie, she mentions that she and her dad had a secret way of communicating. It's actually kind of a touching scene, I think. Oh, yeah. I agree. And she's like, me and my dad had a uh, had a way of communicating. And we end up seeing that he ends up, uh, she ends up taking uh, the letter. She ends up finding the letter and takes it. And turns out, uh, he was using invisible ink that can only be activated by fire. So, uh, oops! Yeah, so, Richard's been exposed. You've been exposed. Yeah, and, uh, we see, uh, Ransom being taken away, and his parents are just in shock over what's going on. Uh, and, um, What happens is Ransom gets ends up taking the custody, and he looks up at uh, Mar Marta, and all the family end up looking up at Marta, and, um, and she's now drinking from the mug, my house, my mug, my rules. And she's looking down at them, and she takes a sip out of it. And that is the end of Knives Out. Amazing movie! Oh my god, this movie was awesome. It was fun talking about. I, I <laughs> what do you think of this, Jacob? Oh yeah, uh, this was really fun to talk about. Knives Out. This was such an amazing film. One of my favorites of 2019. Indeed, indeed. Also, um, also, what what'd you think of the ending, Jacob? I, I thought the ending was really good. I thought it was great. Oh yeah, so good such a freaking good movie and yeah it's a little cliche yeah but you know what fuck it this was fun to watch and it ended in a, as well as you could in this type of situation yes but yep so, that was Knives Out <laughs> sorry I didn't mean this to film in this film uh, makes me want Knives Out 2 even more I know dude I want to see Knives Out 2 so bad give it to me Yes, give it. Give it now, Papa Ryan. Right now. <laughs> Please. Uh, it would be most appreciated if you could uh, give us Knives Out 2 and see more of the adventures of uh, Benal Blanc. That'd be uh, most appre That'd be uh, most uh, sincere. <laughs> that's really good that's really good thank that's you really good. thank you I, thank you I appreciate it <laughs> um yes uh yeah but that's Knives Out appreciate very good film uh a very fun movie and again I can't wait for Knives Out too. yes I 
I need it right now. And it's also, it also proves that Hollywood is not out of ideas just yet. Nope. But that's the most, I think that's the most fun part about this movie for me. Yeah, we need more films like Knives Out. Because yeah. nowadays, in Hollywood, we just get reboots, sequels, Disney live-action remakes, and all that shit. And need- sequel boots. So we need more films like Knives Out. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, me and him love the MCU, but, I mean, you know, make Hollywood great again. That That's the message for today. Yeah. Anyways, so we're done talking about the movie. Is there, uh, Would you mind staying with me for a little bit? We can talk about some extra stuff that's been going on, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Sure, yeah. <sighs> uh, on the one hand, uh, I was going to do this last week, but we've just, I mean... The Batman was probably our longest episode yet, so we didn't really have a lot of time to uh, really do anything or say anything. But uh, we have an announcement about the show that I've been wanting to make for a little while now that we're making soon. Uh, We are making a commercial, a trailer if you could. A commercial, trailer, it's kind of both for this channel. Uh, I'm going to be editing it basically, and um, me and Jake, we're going to do it. And it's going to be fun. It's for a school assignment. But I also thought it could be fun for the channel. Oh boy. I can, it's, I'm actually pretty excited. Yep, uh, I got Jacob his lines. We got a script, so we'll be doing it. Hopefully, it'll be out by next week. I'm hoping. Uh, yeah. I, I gave it to Jacob. Like, Jake, Jacob, what do you think about this? <laughs> I, uh, the script you sent me, I actually like it. Uh, there, there were a few lines where I where I was laughing. Where I was <laughs> like, ah, clever, clever. I was like, yep, that, that's exactly how I would react. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it, it's going to be super tongue-in-cheek. and I was originally going to do it more casual, but I decided we're going to amp up the goofiness. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy it, and uh, hopefully we can use it uh, for the future as well. Because I've, I've really enjoyed this show. And we want to give you guys uh, something fun to watch as well to get uh, interest for the show as well. Indeed. In, indeed, indeed, indeed. Uh, but yes, uh, that that should be fun. Um, also, in some other news, uh, The Northman's coming out soon. Oh yeah. Oh my God, I, I've been wa- I've been actually wanting to talk about this for a little bit. Uh, the Northman, Robert Eggers' new film. <laughs> is coming out, and I am really happy that it's getting, like, more mainstream attention than, uh, The Lighthouse, or The Witch did. Yeah, but the hype surrounding this film, oh boy, like, I'm, I cannot wait for this. Robert Eggers making an epic night movie? Take my money. Oh my lord, yes. I mean, it looks fun. Like, it looks like a really good, like, it looks amazing and i just i want to see it like right now i told my dad i'm like we're seeing this damn movie when it comes out hell yeah i cannot wait for this film oh boy does it it looks so fucking good like it looks amazing like dude 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 dude. doesn't it look amazing i mean like you got robert eggers a-list cast alexander skarsgård nicole kidman ethan hawk anya taylor joy willem dafoe like Give it to me now. Bobby. He's got the he's got the whole gang together. It's fucking gangbusters. Hell yeah! Like give it, give this film to me right now. Just, just, just right now. Just, just right now. Just, just give it. Just, just now. Just, just right now. You know that sort of thing. We should make a T-shirt out of that. A uh, picture of you just screaming, "Give it to me right now, right now." <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, this film looks awesome. I can't wait for it. Like it looks. Amazing, and there's some people who might be all like, "Oh, he's doing a mainstream movie," but no, dude, it looks exactly like uh, it, it looks it looks like a Robert Eggers film, which is just so nice because you know I want to see Robert Eggers succeed, and I'm glad to see that Robert Eggers is succeeding on this level. And he's, and he's only made three films. The Witch, which I still have yet to see, and The Lighthouse, which was my favorite film of 2019. Uh, so I cannot wait for The North Man to see what he does with The North Man. I mean, yeah, man, it's so... 
It's just, like, The Northman looks like the most mainstream film that he's made, which I know might sound bad, but it still feels like a Robert Eggers film, which is so nice, because, you know, I want, I want to see Robert Eggers succeed, and it looks like he is, and it looks like this film is going to be freaking awesome. I mean, did you see that trailer? Hell yeah! Oh, my More Lord. More than a thousand times. Oh, my Lord. It's so, mm, so good. And the marketing for this film has been really great. Oh my god, yes. Like, I was watching UFC last night, and it was sponsored <laughs> by the Northmen. And I'm all like, my boy's all grown. I love it. Ah! You know. Hell yeah. Oh my god, it's so good. It, it looks good. It looks great. Like, it looks amazing. I, I can't wait for it. I, I, I also cannot wait for it. I mean, like... Like my most anticipated film for the rest of the year. Oh, most definitely. Um, also, apparently, everything, everywhere, all at once came out. Uh, it's a, another movie I'd like to see, because apparently, according to Letterbox, it is the most well-reviewed movie on that site. That is ridiculous. In the it's best way like possible. A, it's got like a four point six on Letterbox. I'm like, damn. This movie must be gangbusters. I gotta check it out. And uh, the trailer I've seen from it, like, oh boy, it definitely looks like an A24 film. People are saying, like, uh, this is the Doctor Strange movie we deserved. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, now I'm... <laughs> I just... Oh, what? Uh, what movie were you talking about? My brain just... Oh, I was talking about everything, everywhere, all at once. Oh. I've heard a few... <laughs> I've heard a few... <laughs> oh, I've heard a few... dumbass. <laughs> I've, I've, heard a... I've heard a few people say, like, oh, this is the Doctor Strange film we deserved. Hey, like, don't hey, don't don't diss on Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness just yet. <laughs> Hadn't even come out yet. Like, come on. Don't... No, not no, not Multiverse of Madness. The what? original, the first one. Oh, oh, the first one. Okay, I'm an idiot. Come on, Britain. I'm sorry. I'm like the the movie hadn't even come out yet. Like, come on. Like, come on. Who would diss on a movie that came out before? Oh, okay, but like. All right, if that's the case, I'm going to go see it. I, I do want to see it because I'm a sci- This film is my fucking catnip. Like, multiverse? Sci-fi? Oh, I'm in. Don't even- Take Sam, my money right now. Just- Sam just, Raimi? Hell yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was talking about everywhere all- I'm talking about everyone everywhere all at once. Oh. You got me confused there. Oh, sorry. Um, I am also looking forward to but Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness as well. But yeah, everything, everywhere, all at once. I cannot wait to see that one. Uh, I, I definitely want to see it. I, I want to see if it's in theaters at the moment. I'll, I'll check later. But um, I told my dad though about Back to the Northman. Uh, I'm telling. I told my dad. I'm like, we're seeing that damn movie. I don't like. You're just gonna deal with it. And he's like, okay. <laughs> it's like it, I, I don't care if you suffer through it. I <laughs> I, I, I do hope there's enough action my dad will be pleased with it. Because I'm like, it's going to be an action movie, I think. It, there's going to be great action in it. Like when he fucking catches that spear on the fucking, like, duh. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. I will say I am glad that they're not overextending the marketing. Because, you know, I love the Batman. but I, I And I love the trailers they did for the Batman. I'm not dissing at all on the marketing for that movie. But... At the same time, I do think they kind of overextended their hand a little bit. I don't know about you. No, I, I would agree with you on that. It's just like, okay, okay, don't get us too hyped for it. Yeah, it's like they kind of overextended themselves. Like they were, they did the like Riddler reveal. I'm like, you, you didn't need to show that. I want, I would have rather seen that in the movie. Yeah, I mean, like you were doing amazing so far. Then I was then. To the point where he's like, okay, okay. And they were, like, leaking like scenes, and it's like, okay, like, look, I love the marketing. It's making me hyped for this film, but kind of overextending a little bit. I want to see the movie when it comes out. Yes. Like, don't overhype us. Yeah, but The Northman, I think, very wisely has been, uh, has been keeping the, hasn't been releasing too many trailers and has just been, I mean, they released one scene, which, by the way, if you checked it out, it was freaking awesome. Did you see it? Oh, God. To Valhalla? Yeah. Oh, my God. 
You know, I mean, yes. I'm sorry. Mm. I need it. I need it right now. And, and the Norsemen, I'm, I'm a big fan of Norse mythology, I'll admit. I'm not an expert. On, I will not claim to be an expert on Vikings. I am not. Um, I do love Norse mythology, though. And it looks like this film will be pulling a lot from Norse tradition. Like, uh, definitely, I got the Way of the Weird, or whatever they call it, in, which is basically like their version of fate. And uh, there's definitely vibes of that in the trailer. And I love the kind of fantastical element, the kind of subtle fantastical element that's in the trailer. Me too. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm really excited for this movie. Robert Eggers is quickly one of my favorite filmmakers working right now. So there you go. I cannot wait for the I man. I can't wait either, you know? It's just... Mm-hmm. This film just, oh, it looks so good. Oh, uh, another, uh, I recently just, uh, started Moon Knight. Oh, yeah, you know, I've been wanting to read, I've been wanting to watch that, but I've just been, I've been so busy these last couple weeks, and also just, I've been busy, and then when I'm not busy, I've just been lazy and tired, I don't want to do it, I don't want to watch anything at the moment. Uh, Though I might watch it today, I, I was gonna watch a movie today, but I might watch that as well. Uh, but what do you think of it, Jacob? Uh, so far, uh, it, we've only gotten two episodes so far, but so far, I'm loving it. Like, this is by far, like, the darkest MCU project ever. Like, it's, like, a very dark psychological thriller. And Oscar Isaac, who's quickly become one of my favorite actors, he's phenomenal in this. It's, also, it's like, so so far, I'm really enjoying it. Also, uh, we share a birthday, Oscar Isaac and, my, and me, uh, March 9th. <laughs> Which I always I always call him a birthday twin. I'm like, gotta support the birthday twin. Gotta support them. Also, the homeboy, uh, Ethan Hawke is in it. Who oh, just yes. Oh, I know he's in it. Again, I haven't seen it, but I'm I'm just I'm want to see it just because he's in it because I really like Ethan Hawke and I like Oscar Isaac as well. But Ethan Hawke, talk about one of the most under just underappreciated actors ever. Like he's, so like, he's, like, he's respected, but, like, nobody talks about him. And that sucks, because he's been in so many great movies. There's, like, yeah, it's like people are like, oh, it's Ethan Hawke. And I'm like, no, Ethan Hawke. Phenomenal actor. Got some respect. Yeah, he, apparently he's playing, like, the villain. He's also in The Northman as well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Though, uh, they spoiled it in the trailer. He dies pretty quickly in the movie. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Anyway, back to what you were saying. What you, do you think about? What do you think about uh, Moon Knight? What, how's it going? Oh, Moon Knight! I'm loving the experience so far. Oscar Isaac, uh, a phenomenal, as I said. Ethan Hawke, as usual, fucking amazing. I mean, the action in this, like uh, the violence in this. I mean, I will say this is the most violent I've seen the MCU. I mean, I thought like the no, the I thought like the fight between Green Goblin and Spider Man in No Way Home was violent. No, the action so far in Moon Knight—it's violent. I thought you were going to mention. Say, uh, I thought you were going to mention the Daredevil show and Punisher. Uh, I, I was just about to. That's <laughs> funny you mention it. I would say it's not as violent as Daredevil, but it's yeah, uh, for like the uh, MCU wise, like it's pretty violent. Oh, so like no way low, fuck, <laughs> no way home <laughs> levels. Yeah, I would say no way home level, a violent. Where it's like brutal. Oh it's like, my lord! Yes. Give me more of that, Poppy. Mm, yes. Uh, is, is has Ethan Hawke showed up yet? Oh yeah. Is he good? Yes. He He's fucking great. I mean, it's Ethan Hawke. It's fucking great. I mean, I don't know much about the Moon Knight character. I mean, I just know like uh, he's an anti-hero, and apparently uh, he had mul- he has multiple personality disorder. Mm-hmm. That's all I knew. But uh, watching this, uh, from just from the first two episodes that have been released on Disney Plus, I want to know more about this character. Mm-hmm. So far, I'm really enjoying this. <laughs> yeah. 
Yes, that's that's good. I I've I've been wanting to watch it, but again, I've been either a busy or b too tired to really do anything, rather than just play on my computer and just watch stuff. Mm. But I do want to watch the uh, I do want to watch Moon Knight. You definitely should. Uh, it looks interesting. I mean, the CG looks a little sus for me, but aside from that, it looks interesting. Oh yeah, I would say uh, I would say it's definitely the MCU's most psychological project. Ah, very good then. Because I love me a psychological film. Yeah, I, I do Saw. too. Hell yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, seven. Yeah, yeah, I'll give seven. Uh, Saw. Yeah, I'll give it that. I would say it's a rip-off of Seven, but man, not really. It just kind of rips off the aesthetic. Yeah, aesthetic-wise it rips off Seven, but I wouldn't say it completely rips off Seven. Yes. <laughs> I, I don't usually have an issue with people ripping off other people unless it's just blatant. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> yeah, or if they're just, like, doing it and not really doing anything new. It's just that thing, and you're just like, okay. Come on. I'm like, cool. okay, this is a copy and paste of that movie. It's like uh, that one movie about blue people that we will not be talking about on this channel for a very long time. <laughs> Fuck that movie. You know, uh, oh boy. I mean, I also dread that they will talk about that movie. But <laughs> you know what? When we do, uh, I'll let you take the graph Oh, I, my I know God. Uh, that movie. Oh, God. I hate that fucking movie. <laughs> yeah. Hate it. Anyway, I can't believe we're making a sequel to that shit. Well, get ready, because we're getting ten more. Oh my god, no! <laughs> ah, no, but, uh... You know, this it's stuff like this that makes me respect Ethan Hawke, because, like, nothing's beneath him, you know? Yeah, nothing is. It's kind of like Willem Dafoe. Yeah, most of the stuff he's chosen has been great. Oh yeah. There hasn't been like a, a like a just <laughs> like a stumble and fall just yet from him. No, he hasn't made one missed fall yet. Uh, let's see. I don't know what else to talk about at the moment. I mean, there is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, there were rules of, or there was some stuff about America Chavez recently, but aside from that, uh, I'm, I'm excited for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. We see Sam Raimi make his triumphant return to the superhero genre. Hell yeah. And uh, I can't wait for it, because, I mean, as you all know, uh, the Spider-Man trilogy from Raimi was a big part of my childhood. Very formative films for me. Oh yeah, I mean I've said this like the first Spider-Man film. It was my, it was like uh, how Signs inspired Chris Stuckman. Mm -hmm. Like that film means so much to me. The whole trilogy means so much to me, and even three. Yes, don't come at me, haters. I don't think anyone really hates Spider-Man Three anymore. Like, I think the Amazing Spider-Man films kind of took precedence over Spider-Man Three Eight. Uh, oh God, yeah. We're not mentioning those anymore. <laughs> you can check out our reviews for those in the in the uh, channel. Yeah, just go do that if you want to know our opinions. <laughs> uh, warning, there will be a lot of yelling and swearing if you're offended by that. Then um, don't watch it. Also, why are you watching our show if you're offended by offensive language? Yeah, I mean, we, uh, we did... We... We've had Carlton on, so... <laughs> yeah, we've had Carlton on. Oh, Lord. But, yes, um... It, it, very exciting in the film world at the moment. It is. Films are coming back, like, finally. And, uh, The Northman will be, uh... coming out soon. So, I'm excited for that. Are there any films you've been seeing recently? Anything you've you've watched as of late? Uh, you know, I do plan on uh, watching Blade Runner again, the final cut. 
Oh, yeah. Oh, boy. Yeah. Uh, good luck. I mean, good I point. love Blade Runner, one of the best films ever made, in my opinion. But uh, I will admit, it can be a bit of a tough watch, because it is very slow. Yeah, and, oh, boy, it's so complex. Oh, yeah. Just, oof. Yeah, that, that'll be, I'll be watching that film four or more times. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a wild experience. In the final cut, not going to watch the director's cut or theatrical, which I I haven't seen those yet. I've only seen the final cut, which was a great, uh, <clears throat> which is a great introduction to Blade Runner. Because uh, the final cut, as I've heard, is considered to be the best cut. Yeah, I, w- I would agree with that. It's probably the most, um, it's probably the most well-realized cut, because the one that came out in theaters is awful. Um, just, just the most egregious version of studios butchering a movie. And they had, like, they, because, you know, Blade Runner takes a lot of inspiration from the noir genre, and the noir genre, at least film-wise, there's a lot of narration. So they had Harrison Ford come in, and if you watch the theatrical cut, which I would not recommend, it is a very painful experience, um... You can just tell Harrison Ford is hating every second of spewing awful dialogue uh, that basically takes... that He sounds bored, and he sounds like he doesn't want to do it. So, there you go. Uh, the other cuts are better, but I've heard the... But the final cut, I will say, it is the best version of the movie. Yeah, I watched Chris Stuckman's review on Blade Runner on how he was talking about, like, you need to watch it four more times to really understand it. And he and he even said like uh, the theatrical cut was the first uh, first cut I watched. And man, he basically said I did not like it. And then I watched the extended cut, and I was like, yeah, I still don't like it. Then I watched the final cut, I still didn't understand it. But I watched it four more times, and I came and I've come to love Blade Runner. So I'm like, oh, I'm glad I watched the final cut. I'm watching the final cut. Uh, after I watch the final cut uh, five more times, then uh, I'll go watch the theatrical cut and see how awful that is. Yeah, the the theatrical version is horrendous. <laughs> like, nah, I'll lay it straight. It's bad. It's very bad. No, now I want to see the theatrical cut. Oh, I mean, if you want to have a good laugh, it's it's not it, it you know like you you'll probably either be annoyed or laugh at it. I mean, there's no really in between. Hmm. At least for me, anyway. I don't know about uh, so, you. Well, yeah, I'll let you know when I uh, check out the theatrical cut. Sometime, don't, I don't plan on checking it out very soon. You know, no, I'm I'm very curious after uh, what you said. Because I'm like, damn. Oh, shit, I forgot the fanat- Fanatic on my list. On the list of all the movies we watched. <gasps> oh, the Fanatic? Best oh, movie Lord. ever made. No. Yeah. He's like, yeah, greatest film ever made, boys and girls. Yeah, like, fuck Godfather. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. A riveting indie with genuine suspense. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yep. <laughs> oh, jeez. Ah, oh, what a movie. Whew. I'm like, I knew I was forgetting a movie out of this. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> we need to make that into a shirt. A riveting indie with genuine suspense. God, <laughs> you actually meant that can't believe someone said that about the fanatic of all movies just it's not good people it's not it's like if somebody said batman and robin is the is one of the greatest superhero films of all time i'm like you must be on some drugs or something like a riveting any with genuine suspense and it's not like you were un- unironically saying that you actually genuinely I can't believe I forgot the fanatic fanatic at all the movies we watch here. Huh. 
Hmm. Anyway. Oh, it's because we did the Snyder Cut twice. That's okay. So, yeah, that's right. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> we did the Snyder Cut two times. You can see, you just hear me just, you know. Uh, oh, God. But uh, what were we talking about again? Uh, we talk, uh, you were, uh, we were talking about The Fanatic. Oh, yeah, that movie's terrible. We did a, we did a review on it. Actually, um, it took less long. It took not as long as we thought it would, but hey, it it, it was fun to make. Oh, it was. Just wait till next week. It'll be even less time. Oh God! <laughs> What's the movie you chose for next week? I've been wanting to ask, but I've been kind of dreading this. <laughs> oh, okay, be prepared. We are gonna be talking about one of the best animated films, Norm of the North. Oh, God. <laughs> Talking about Norm in the North. I hate you. <laughs> uh, you're the worst. <laughs> oh, God. This, oh, I'm doing Norm of the North out of all the movies. I do have, I do have, I have picked the one we'll do next week, but I won't say it till next week, but, oh boy, Norm of the North. By far, just the best animated film ever made. Hell yeah. Even but Toxie like, Incredibles. Yeah, it's fucking the Incredibles, Norm of the North, hell yeah. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. I can't even say that without laughing. Ugh. <laughs> I can't even say that without wincing. Just, ugh. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I, I you know I don't want to talk about Norm of the North, but fuck it, we'll just we'll just suck it up and do it. You know what? You can see this as a favor because uh, we're getting this movie out of the way, so we don't have to talk about it again. <laughs> you know what? Fine, I'll take I'll take that. We're doing Norm of the North. Oh God. Uh, I, you know I haven't seen it in a long time, so I've kind of forgot what all happens. What I do remember is that he's trying to make like how Ken Jung is trying to make. Houses in the North Pole. So I'm sure we'll talk about that. And twerking. Don't forget twerking. Oh, God. Yeah, twerking polar bear. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Fuck Norman North. Anyways, we'll talk about that next week. Hopefully I don't die in the attempt. <laughs> I, I might do another drunk episode, but... Uh, uh, we'll see. I oh, guess we'll no. see. Oh, God, no. No? I thought you liked when I get drunk. Uh, uh, yeah, but, uh, if you, uh, take, uh, too many more shots, then, uh, you know what? I might get drunk with you. Because, <laughs> uh, I, uh, I despise that. All right, but, yeah. Jeez, okay, so we're talking about Norman of the North, I guess. Uh, 27, favorite number. And also, we talk about Knives Out. I enjoyed myself. I've been Britain. And I've been Jacob. And we do it for the love of the movies. Yes, we do. At least most of the time. Not next week. <laughs>